What's up y'all, Toya here, and I am back with another video for y'all. Before we get into the video, make sure you guys leave a like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. All right, y'all, welcome back to Toya Reacts, where I react to anything and everything gig related. So today, we got three videos we gotta go over, so let's just go ahead and get right into it. Okay, I don't mean to do a post like this, but I have to, I am just, livid and actually this is the second take of this video because i just ranted on the first video so i'm not quite so livid anymore but anyway i just delivered a catering bag order for ten dollars and 78 cents plus three dollars setup so thirteen dollars 78 cents to go 21.6 miles one way i usually have pretty good luck with catering bag orders. So I thought, you know, if this is obviously going to a company, they're paying for, you know, some employee meeting or whatever, they're gonna give a percentage of the tip <laughs> and it was tons of food. Nope. And I set nope. it up and of course I opened my bag and one of the containers, he didn't seal all the way and it leaked all over inside my bag. I mean, like I'm gonna have to either get rid of my bag or really wash it because it's so gross i can't do any more catering orders today so anyway i go in there i set it up it's leaking all over i'm cleaning it up i'm helping them out and i hit uh confirm and there's no tip none no tip zero so i'm like hmm, do i say something so i said I don't mean to be this way. I'm so sorry, but like I drove 20 miles and there's no tip on here. And the girl's like, well, we're going to have to talk to my supervisor or whatever. So we go in, talk to her, which is embarrassing enough. The supervisor wants like a paper receipt. I am like, I just have my phone. I don't know. And so I'm like, I'm really sorry, but you know, there's no tip on here. Was there supposed to be a cash tip or, you know, like I'm embarrassed, but I drove 20 miles, you know? So anyway, she goes, oh, just throw a $10 tip on there. And I'm like, I, I can't do that. <laughs> and $10 doesn't cover. Whew. All right. Well, first of all, this son keep trying to make an appearance. So hopefully... I'm not getting too much glare on this camera because I'm not re-recording this. I'm telling you, I'm not re-recording this. But man, catering orders, no tip. I haven't done a catering order off of DoorDash or any of those other food delivery platforms. I've only done specifically catering apps, so delivered, and then I did my first deliver that order a few days ago. And you know, you pretty much know what you're gonna get up front. I do know that for DoorDash, for instance, if it's a catering order, they might have like a little plus symbol to show like, you know, the total could be more. And I think they call them what hidden tips, right? Or hidden pay, however you want to categorize it. So I don't know what it looks like for her in the beginning. If it was just like, all right, $13 plus and you know, you're driving 20 miles and it's kind of like a gamble for those orders because you don't know if you're gonna get maybe an extra 20 maybe 25 dollars on top of what you were initially offered or you know you can get 25 cents and no exaggeration i've literally seen people get an additional 25 cents on top of what they were originally offered that's the hidden tip right now i know we've talked about tipping plenty of times on this channel right but for me personally i feel like when you start crossing over to different sizes of orders or larger size orders in comparison to you know your standard food delivery when nine times out of ten you're delivering maybe a bag or two maybe a pizza box you know very minimum amount of food right you can usually do all of that in one trip but when you start to scale up like for the grocery delivery for instance you got a lot 
lot of stuff you're dealing with. Sometimes you might have to make multiple trips from your car to the customer's door. And same with catering. You know, you're carrying a lot of food. And for myself, you know, you guys have seen how I do my catering orders. I have my catering bags and I have my wagon for easy transport because a lot of the times that stuff I can't just carry by hand. Like if I didn't have my wagon, I would be screwed. Like some of those bags can weigh like 20, 30 pounds, you know, with all the pans together. So yeah, it's more work and yeah, you should be getting more. So assuming that that $13 that she got, that was probably base pay from the platform. And she's looking like, wait a second, they didn't give a tip. And honestly, I'm not too surprised because once I started to do catering more and more, I started to see a pattern and seeing like, okay, these are the facilities that usually don't tip. And from my experience so far, it's mostly the medical facilities. They don't tip. Tipping is not in their budget. All right. So to be quite honest, if I was doing DoorDash and I got a catering order and I saw that the pay was less than the mileage, you know, it, I guess it kind of depends on how my day is going. And, you know, it's kind of hard to say right now what I would take. You know, the thing with that plus sign that you see at the end of your total, you know, that they give you when they're offering you the order, it's, it's a gamble. <laughs> you don't know what you're going to get. You might get a few cents extra and you might hit the jackpot and you get an extra $20, $30. You know, it's just a gamble. And really the only thing you got to figure out is, do I feel like playing that game right now? And, you know, she played the game and unfortunately it, it didn't really work out for her. So yeah, it's, it's an unfortunate thing that, you know, when people are dealing with large orders like this, you know, me personally, like I said, I know we had this conversation about tipping, but if you're talking about a large scale order, you're dealing with a lot of food, you're dealing with a lot of merchandise, whatever, you know, you should have the decency to slide a little something you know, and when she was saying that the person was talking about add $10, it sounds like they were trying to say, put on the app to add $10, but you know, obviously we don't have the authority to give ourselves a tip. You know, they have to input it themselves. You know, I, I don't know. $10, like if they would have gave a $10 tip, you know, cash tip, or if they put it in the app, you know, I would have just had to take it. You know, it's, it's my loss if I decided to take an order that I had to drive 20 miles for, and I saw what the initial pay was going to be, and I saw that plus sign. I just got to decide if I want to take that gamble. And like I said, in this case, she lost lost and it didn't work out for her so that's the unfortunate thing and you know hopefully she was able to get a better order in the future to make up for it so yeah all right moving on to the next video could this be the reason why women don't like male shoppers yep this story starts with a bag of organic popcorn and this item was out of stock customer says she got no communication throughout the entire shop until it showed that her order was delivered and what pray tell did the shopper bring this customer Bruh. Popcorn kernels, olive oil, and some pink Himalayan sea salt. I guess so she can make it herself. <laughs> I honestly don't even know what to say about that one. I don't even know how true that is because, first of all, that olive oil... Olive oil is expensive. I, I get that same size bottle. I get a different brand because that particular brand is expensive. So I don't know how true this is because substituting a item under $2 for this big old jug of oil that's like 20 plus dollars. I don't know how true that is. But, you know, it's still a good laugh. It's still funny. But yeah, I don't think it's an issue with female and male shoppers. And no offense to the guys, you know, you guys are great. You know, I love my husband. He's great. But I'm not going to lie. Sometimes, guys, y'all be trying to apply logic to places where logic doesn't need to be applied. You know, a dude might be thinking, look, you want you one bag of popcorn. But look, look, I got you. I got you. Take this whole kit. You got your oil. You got the got the kernels. You got the seasoning. You're you going to have popcorn for days. Not even days. You'll have popcorn for weeks. And... <laughs> Logically speaking, yes, you would definitely have a lot more popcorn than what you would get in that little bitty bag. But that is not what I asked for. I'm sorry. Like legit, if I'm asking for a specific brand of a product and they don't have that brand, but they got another brand and you try to give me that brand, I don't want it. I don't, I don't want it. I don't care if you think it tastes the same, it don't taste the same to me. Okay, so I'm gonna need you to stick with what I asked for or don't get it at all. But listen, shout out to all the shoppers out there. But listen, I'm gonna need you 
to follow the instructions, please. Like there's this one time I was using Instacart and I needed smoked paprika. So I specifically asked for smoked paprika and a few other items. I forgot everything that I ordered. And I get a notification that the shopper was trying to replace something. So I'm like, okay, let me open this up. Tell me why this person was trying to replace my smoked paprika with cinnamon. Cinnamon. You know, it could work in some cases, but it no, not here. It wouldn't work here. I don't know. I don't know what's up with some shoppers. Like, I know y'all be trying, but some stuff you just can't replace it with other things. Like, honestly, in this case, if they had a different brand of smoked paprika, I probably would have went with that. And I think actually that's what I put for the substitution. But I guess they didn't have that either. So they thought the next best thing would be cinnamon. I, I don't know but yeah again like I said I just thought this was a funny video substitutions can be interesting but yeah please shoppers shoppers please always stay in communication with your customer to make sure you're getting what they want it will save us and you a lot of headache so yeah that's it and moving on to the last video 18 and then eventually $20 an hour including the time that these workers spend on call waiting for deliveries or just when they're actually actively making a delivery? Overall, so right now, DoorDash and Uber Eats who have responded forcefully against this, saying like, you're basically incentivizing us to what, lay off workers, tell people not to tip because things are gonna be so expensive. They say, you know, we pay these workers a lot of money while they're working <laughs> for us. But the city says, when you look at how much time people spend waiting around, waiting to get these calls, that's where they're, they're not making any money. That's why the rates that the city uh, sort of puts these workers at, you say a lot of these guys are making about $7 an hour mm -hmm. when, you fo when you actually look at what their days look like. And that's because these apps have kind of this, this issue, right? These apps tell workers, we will sort of pay you to do this convenient, easy thing for yourself. And then they turn around and tell customers, we got tons of delivery guys. Don't worry about it. Every, everything's just a click away. And yet to make that happen, that means you're gonna have to have a lot of guys staring around, you know, sitting around staring at their phone. Now, the reason I picked up this clip is because I kind of wanted to discuss the new law that was passed in New York. There weren't too many other videos that I could find. A lot of them had background music and, you know, I'm trying to get to the main point of what's going on here. So yeah, I got this one to kind of spark the conversation. So yeah, in light of what's going on in New York, and I personally am gonna have to do a little bit more research on this because I don't wanna give you guys false information. And please correct me if there is anything that you know I gave out like as far as incorrect information because I'm seeing a bunch of conflicting reports everywhere about you know what's going on. But New York passed a law and it's pretty much guaranteeing that the food delivery drivers would be getting paid a minimum of I think it's $17.96 an hour. Now, I also, saw something else that was saying DoorDash would pay $29 and 90 something cents an hour. So $30 an hour. And like I said, this is where I'm a little bit confused as far as what's actually happening. I think what's actually happening specifically in New York is the 17 an hour, or might as well say $18 an hour minimum. And this is where I need you guys to correct me because I heard that the platforms had an option of either you pay the 30 an hour or you pay the 18 an hour. And both of them had their pros and cons to them. So I I think with that 29 90 whatever an hour that only included active time so if you're waiting around waiting for an order to get sent to your phone you're not getting paid for that you're only getting paid from the time that you receive the order and you're picking up the order and you're driving to drop off that order right that's the only thing that entailed now I don't know if that's the same case with the 1796 again I've heard conflicting reports you know this is still kind of new and you know I'm just trying to get the facts straight I don't know if that all also just includes active time or if that's just everything as a whole. All right, I had to go ahead and put this visor up. Like I said, I'm not re-recording this video. I don't care if this sun got me looking crazy, okay? We, 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 we ain't doing no redos. But back to what I was saying, I do know for sure that the platforms are supposed to pretty much round up to meet that minimum. So if you only made like, say $10 an hour during your outing, you know, collectively, DoorDash 
DoorDash or Uber Eats or whoever, they're supposed to go ahead and bump up your pay to match that minimum that they're supposed to pay you by law. You know, this is great. I feel like this is great. This is a good step in the right direction when it comes to regulating these apps because they have definitely gotten away with a lot, you know, mainly not paying their drivers. That's the main thing. Now, the only downside to this, which we have clearly seen recently, while I do want regulation when it comes to gig work, because like I said, these companies just take advantage of you since you're actually not an employee. But the thing is, they're going to have to do this at a federal level because, you know, just a few states here and there deciding they want to go ahead and do something, you know, not to say that it's not a good thing, but it kind of does screw over everybody else because they're going to be forced to pay this minimum minimum amount for pay in select areas, they're like, okay, we got to save money. So they could be potentially cutting more pay in those areas that are not being regulated. You know, we just seen a dip in DoorDash's base pay. We talked about how Instacart lowered their base pay as well a few months ago. Now, the other thing that a lot of people might not be talking about is the fact that, you know, this sounds all great and dandy, right? You know, we're finally getting regulation, we're getting drivers paid fairly and all of this. You know, who's to say that the government, because, you know, this is the government we're talking about, you can't really trust them to do too much good, right? So who's to say that, you know, a few months down the line or another year or two down the line, they might not come out with another bill or some type of regulation that is in favor for the companies. You know, I feel like it's going to be a never ending cycle because, you know, like I said, you know, it was great that, you know, we're finally getting some regulation in some areas, but keep in mind, the value of the dollar is not what it was. <laughs> like this can go ahead and get bumped up to $20 an hour. Cost of living where I am is one thing, but you know, if I go into the city, that's another. I don't know what the cost of living looks like in New York. So I don't even know if that's really a reasonable wage. I mean, obviously it's a lot better than what they were getting before, but as you know, the cost of living starts to go up, who's to say that this minimum is actually going to be considered enough to pay the bills. And of course, considering, you know, you got to put this money back into your car for maintenance and gas. How much are you really making at the end of the day after all of this? You know, like I said, it's, it's a lot of things that I don't think a lot of people necessarily think about up front. You know, a minimum wage is not a livable wage in a lot of places, probably all places if you wanna be completely honest. We've gotten to the point where you literally have people making double minimum wage, if not triple minimum wage, and they're still struggling to get by. You know, the cost of living versus, you know, how much you're getting paid, you know, it's, like I said, the value of the dollar is not the same, but I'm just curious to see how this plays out in the future. Are we going to move to a federal level where all delivery workers are going to have to get paid this minimum? Then you're going to have a whole nother situation where you have people doing other jobs where they make that same amount of money and, and they're going to be like, well, they're doing less work. I get paid the same amount, but they're doing less work. You know, that's not fair. This and that. And, and I've heard the similar argument when they were pushing to make $15 an hour, the minimum wage for Chicago. People were complaining like, well, you know, I'm already making 15 an hour doing this. You know, I work in a warehouse. I do this. I do that. Whatever. Right. And they're complaining that, you know, these teenagers are going to be making 15 an hour working at McDonald's. And they're like, you know, where's the equality? How are they getting paid this much? And I'm getting paid the same, but I do more work. And, you know, it's the same argument, but no, it's, it's something. It's definitely something that, you know, you kind of have to dive in and dissect a little bit more. And like I said, these are just a few things, you know, you peeling back those layers and you're like, okay, this is cool, but what about everybody else in the country? Okay. If you want to go ahead and do it on a federal level, you know, what does that mean in the future? You know, how does this affect people that are already getting paid that wage and they're technically doing more work? You know, those people are going to be upset. You know, how does this actually equate? to three, four, five years in the future, you know, a lot of these minimum wage laws that they pass, it's a gradual increase, you know, it's going to be 17 or $18 one year, next year is 19, the year after that is 20, and you know, it's slowly increasing, but the value of that dollar is just 
constantly dropping as you increase the pay, it's still technically not really keeping up with the cost of living. Like I said, it's just a lot that you kind of have to unpack. And yeah. But I would love to hear you guys' thoughts on this whole situation with this minimum pay for gig workers in New York and beyond because, you know, I'm pretty sure this is going to spread further into other states eventually. And yeah, I'm just curious to know what you guys think about the whole situation overall. So yeah, guys, what do you think? Let me know in the comments. Now, before I go ahead and get up out of here, guys, I have to remind you to leave a like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you do not miss a video. But I'm going to go ahead and get up out of here, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'm going to catch you guys on the next one. And as always, stay safe out there and keep grinding.